the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the country you possess, you shall allow a redemption of the land. If your brother becomes poor and sells part of his property, then his nearest redeemer shall come and redeem what his brother has sold. If a man has no one to redeem it, and then himself becomes prosperous and finds sufficient means to redeem it, let him calculate the years since he sold it and pay back the balance to the man to whom he sold it, and then return to his property. But if he does not have sufficient means to recover it, then what he sold shall remain in the hand of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. In the Jubilee it shall be released, and he shall return to his property. If a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city, he may redeem it within a year of its sale. For a full year he shall have the right of redemption. If it is not redeemed within a full year, then the house in the walled city shall belong in perpetuity to the buyer throughout his generations. It shall not be released in the Jubilee. But the houses of the villages that have no wall around them shall be classified with the fields of the land. They may be redeemed, and they shall be released in the Jubilee. As for the cities of the Levites, the Levites may redeem at any time the houses and the cities they possess. And if one of the Levites exercises his right of redemption, then the house that was sold in a city they possess shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses and the cities of the Levites are their possession among the people of Israel. But the fields of pasture land belonging to their cities may not be sold, for that is their possession forever. If your brother becomes poor and cannot maintain himself with you, you shall support him as though he were a stranger and a sojourner, and he shall live with you. Take no interest from him or profit, but fear your God, that your brother may live beside you. You shall not lend him your money at interest, nor give him your food for profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. If your brother becomes poor beside you and sells himself to you, you shall not make him serve as a slave. He shall be with you as a hired worker and as a sojourner. He shall serve with you until the year of the Jubilee. Then he shall go out from you, he and his children with him, and go back to his own clan and return to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him ruthlessly, but shall fear your God. As for your male and female slaves whom you may have, you may buy male and female slaves from among the nations that are around you. You may also buy from among the strangers, who sojourn with you and their clans that are with you, who have been born in your land, and they may be your property. You may bequeath them to your sons after you to inherit as a possession forever. You may make slaves of them, but over your brothers the people of Israel you shall not rule one over another ruthlessly. If a stranger or sojourner with you becomes rich, and your brother beside him becomes poor and sells himself to the stranger or sojourner with you, or to a member of the stranger's clan, then after he is sold, he may be redeemed. One of his brothers may redeem him, or his uncle or his cousin may redeem him, or a close relative from his clan may redeem him. Or if he grows rich, he may redeem himself. He shall calculate with his buyer from the year when he sold himself to him until the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall vary with the number of years. The time he was with his owner shall be rated as the time of a hired worker. If there are still many years left, he shall pay proportionately for his redemption some of his sale price. If there remain but a few years until the year of Jubilee, he shall calculate and pay for his redemption in proportion to his years of service. He shall treat him as a worker hired year by year. He shall not rule ruthlessly over him in your sight. And if he is not redeemed by these means, then he and his children with him shall be released in the year of Jubilee. For it is to me that the people of Israel are servants. They are my servants whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up on the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them, but when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret, and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him, and ran about the whole region, and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces, and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment and as many as touched it were made well. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Leviticus chapter 25. We're going to look at verses 23 through 55 today and continuing on the property and the year of Jubilee. Um, 
during the time of Jubilee, those who had land and property taken away or it's been sold will have it returned to them. And it's the idea that God is the owner of all land for God is the one who created all. And it also deals with how to treat the poor. God wants people to treat poor with dignity and respect. Have the poor who has no place to live, let them live with you, but without making extra charge of interest. They were to live, we were not to refuse the poor. Uh, we need to open the doors for those who are poor. And God also does not want poor to be worked as a slave. Instead, they should be a higher workers. And until the day, until the year of Jubilee, uh, which they are, would all be set free. Guideline for the slave owners. And God give rules for those who own slave. You could own slave and also that slave could be passed on to their children. But the slave uh, relative could also purchase them out of their uh, slavery and they could be set free. Uh, if someone from the home country also, they also could purchase them and set them free. Also, the slave could make enough money for to purchase, purchase their own freedom. On the year of Jubilee, though, all the slaves are to be set free. For the Lord brought them out of the land of Egypt in their slavery. Now in Mark chapter 6, verse 45 through 56, the miracle continues. We saw that how Jesus fed 5,000 men and all the other in the remote place with just two fish and five loaves of bread. And Jesus told the disciples to meet him on the other side. And Jesus then go up to the mountain to pray. From the height of the mountain, he saw disciples struggling and fighting the waves. Uh, winds and the waves on the boat. So this was at a fourth watch, which means 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. between those time. Jesus walked on water and rejoins the disciple and they were afraid because a man was walking towards him in the middle of the dark stormy time. It was Jesus assured them that it is him and he walked right into the boat and the wind and the wave they all died down and it became calm. Now disciples were astonished at what they saw, but yet their heart was hardened. And because of that, they really didn't understand who Jesus was. And then story goes on where Jesus goes to the another side and many people recognize who Jesus was and they brought the sick people uh, to him. And they were healed and even those people who touched a piece of his garment they were healed and they were made well now all these miracles from uh, feeding the five thousand men to jesus walked on water and healing what is this all about well it is to point something very important and that is that only god could do this thing only god is able to do this kind of mir miraculous work and it was Jesus who did it to say that Jesus is the Son of God, that He came on earth to do this thing as a sign to show who He is. Jesus is truly the Son of God. He is truly the Messiah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. I pray that you would help us to open our eyes to see the enormous power that you possess. It's obvious because you are the Son of God, because you are God, that you are able to do these things, Lord. Help us never to doubt who you are, in Jesus' name, amen.